Thank you. Next question. Regarding the 1981 Santa Monica City Council Resolution 6296, in 1981, Santa Monica City Council unanimously passed Resolution 6296. It states that it is the policy of the City of Santa Monica to effect the closure of the Santa Monica Municipal Airport as soon as possible and to devote the property on which it is located to its highest and best use and for an environment consistent with the city's generally residential character. This resolution is still in effect today. That was 1981. <clears throat> resolution was signed by five mayors and two mayor pro tems. <clears throat> Three years before Santa Monica and the FAA signed the 1984 airport agreement, since 1981, city decisions regarding the airport have led to a significant and expensive runway upgrade to accommodate corporate and private jets. The intent of the 1984 agreement was to lessen the impact of aircraft operations for all neighborhoods around the airport. But in reality, noise got worse, Air pollution from jets grew to be a public health concern, and today the community continues to live with the increasing probability of a jet mishap that could be so much worse than the smaller piston aircraft crashes we have experienced. We understand that in the city's view, all problems stem from the FAA's unwillingness to close the airport or even to be reasonable when it comes to runway safety areas. Some feel that the Santa Monica City Council seems to be embarking on the path of negotiations with the FAA, similar to the one that left us with the 1984 agreement. Given all this, and in light of a failed 1984 airport agreement, to even address noise impacts upon the surrounding community, communities, would you support Santa Monica City Council Resolution 6296? What vision would you propose for the airport land? And Jerry was already popping up before I finished, so I'll let Jerry speak and then gleam. Over here too. One and a half minutes. One and a half minutes. Thank you. Thanks, Marty. And I, I'm glad this is very educational to hear this. And thank you for sending out the info. I read that resolution before computers, on a typewriter, but a city council that had the foresight to know this. This was 30 years ago. We talk about who was the first to suggest closing the airport. They were, before any of us. And we owe it to that historic, wonderful city council to do it. It says as soon as possible. Well, to me, that means 2015, if we're dealing with possibility and reality. But they, you have to read all that. They propose stuff that could be written today. I have a vision. It's come from a lot of all of you. Open space, community gardens, affordable housing, things to deal with art and education, people coming there and appreciating the art resources that are already there, but more abundantly, more parks, more playing fields for the kids. My goodness, putting through feeder streets that will alleviate the traffic in that area and help everyone. Absolutely. And if anyone, if Rand's going to do a study, or the city, do a real economic study of how this will tremendously benefit the economic uh, tangent of the city at a time when we need it because redevelopment funding is being taken away. And we're not talking about building skyscrapers there. 
and we went to Friends of Sunset Park, and everyone went to be there. But we need that land to benefit Santa Monica. And even if we did nothing there on the runway, except have skateboarders go down, if we close the airport, it would still benefit the city. I just want to say one thing. Allow me to retort to what Jerry said uh, about please. the first candidate. Uh, that's all I ever said. I was the first candidate to recommend closing the airport. Uh, let, me, let me just, a uh, little ground rules. We're not debating. We don't have time to debate 15 members. We want to get information out there to the community. People say, I mean, I've heard things said here that I could have said, there is no lead and jet fuel. But, you know, it, it, we understand that lead is a problem. It comes from the piston aircraft. Jets have their unique things. But the fact is, and I'm sorry for digressing, We'll, we'll go on, but not, not a debate. Thank you. Hi, I'm Gleam Davis again, um, and I, I'll answer the first one. Resolution 6296, I support it in a concept. I just want to remind people that it was the adoption of this resolution that actually led to the horrible 1984 settlement agreement. After this resolution was adopted by the city council, the city was sued. We the city had attempted to reduce decibel limitations from 100 down to 80. The court enjoined that reduction. There was subsequent litigation about this very resolution, and that's what led to the 1984 agreement. So that shows you that sometimes litigation and adopting a resolution with the very best of intentions does not always get you to the place you want to be. And so I think the fear or that some people perceive that the city council is embarking on a negotiation process rather than simply going in and saying, what the heck, let them sue us. This is one of the reasons we need to be very measured and study in what we do. And that analyzing the outcome of litigation is more of an art than a science. And as an attorney who's litigated for over 30 years, I can tell you, I'm happy to litigate, but I want to make sure that what we get out of the litigation is what this community needs. So I support the resolution in theory. I think what we need to do in the interim between now and 2015 are look for operational changes in the airport. Very briefly on my vision for the airport land, I think that's a community decision. I don't think my vision is what matters. I think it's the vision of the community. But I do want to make it clear with the loss of redevelopment, we do not have the money as a city to build things there. So there would have to be some development there in order to fund things like the parks and things that Jerry is talking about. And people would need to be aware that the airport, which doesn't generate a lot of vehicular traffic, would probably turn into a greater source of traffic if we did that. Can I go? Sure. Hi. Frank, you go the name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Richard. Um, well, I, I support that motion. I agree with Jerry. It's just amazing, especially like the preamble for it and all that kind of stuff, how well it was kind of drafted, uh, thought about. Um, but I want to point out, here I have a copy of the 1984 agreement. And the agreement is very clear that you, the city, it says, the city's obligation to operate the airport for the duration of this agreement, section eight to July 1st, 2015. Now, I feel like, you know, when I moved to Santa Monica and I started getting involved in this stuff, I always heard this, like Ken Genser would tell me, we're gonna close the airport after 2014. It was always understood that we could close the airport. And then something happened, and two or three years ago, all of a sudden, oh, maybe we don't have the right to close the airport. You know, maybe, and I just didn't get it. I mean, something happened with the will to look at this agreement and say, the implication of this agreement is that we can close the airport. Now, whether the mechanism is closing the western 2,000 feet of the runway or whatever it is, but we go, I think we have to, we can't abandon this part of this agreement. Yeah, the agreement had a lot of bad things. It didn't, it didn't even mention air pollution. It was way, you know, th things have come to the fore since then. But it did say, it gave a date that we should be able to close it. I don't think we should lose that. As for what to do with the land, yes, a public process, I think the kind of things that have been talked about, it is, this is a generational moment for us with this project. We cannot be weak-kneed about it. 
it's, it's, this is what our grandchildren, if they should be fortunate enough to live in Santa Monica, will thank us for, for getting these 200 some acres back to Santa Monica. Hi, my name is John C. Smith. Sorry. John, just a sec. Uh, lo and behold, I thought everyone was here, city council candidates, uh, for some reason. I thought we, I'm sure we had 15. Was there another? Uh, Roberto's not here. Well, Roberto's here now. You want to, is there still a seat? Come on up, Roberto. Come around this way, please. Thank you. Okay, uh, John, you can. That's okay. Um, in, I, I read through the 1981 document, Resolution 6, 6296. What really strikes me is that 30 years ago, the city council unanimously voted to consider shutting down the airport. And here we are today, and the problems that they noticed 30 years ago have gotten a lot worse, especially in the last 10 years with the number of jet, jet takeoffs and landings uh, and the number of flight schools. Sixty percent of the, all the flights that leave the airport are touch and go landings from flight schools. Um, in terms of my vision for the airport, when you're reason, reading through this document, you, what you find, it, it mentions we should develop the land, that the land is being underused, that few people benefit from the airport right now, and that uh, it could generate a lot greater revenue. And that, that, that got me a little scared because I start thinking about development. Here's what I don't want to happen at Santa Monica Airport and that 227. I don't want to see another Playa Vista in the heart of Santa Monica. Bringing <laughs> I don't want to trade one problem for another problem. And you know, the increase in traffic, when I'm riding by the airport on my bike, I'm worried more about getting hit by a car than I, than I am from anything at the airport. As far as my vision goes for the airport, I do think that Santa Monica has, doesn't have enough open space, and we need a lot more of it. I favor, if there's going to be development on the land, it should be maybe single family homes. And if a developer can't come up with a way to provide, to make money off of single family homes that fit in with the rest of the neighborhood, I think we find other developers. Thank you very much. Okay, Tony. Hello. I agree with the, uh, definitely with the resolution. And one of the things that's it's kind of appalling to me, you know, when I was on the airport commission, I always attended these airport commissions as a liaison with the understanding that we were going to uh, consider a uh, look at closing the airport, if at all possible. And I'm, I kind of agree with uh, Frank, what you're saying that, you know, it, it was like a couple years ago that all of a sudden it started appearing in council meetings, and then I was hearing from my neighbors and from several of the, the groups that have been organized around this that there's no way you can close it down. And one of the things that, that I think we need to do as a community is to, I think, not only put pressure on our elected officials here in Santa Monica, but also on our federal. You know, when this is an FAA project and it's with the federal government, and uh, Waxman, who's our congressman, I think really needs to step up He's one of the senior members in Congress, and I can't believe he can't put pressure on the federal government to really restrict the airport, and if not to close it, to definitely curtail the hours of operation. We keep hearing that it's a recreational airport, but it doesn't operate on recreational hours. It's a, com it's a corporate airport. When I was coaching Little League at Marine Park, I couldn't kick up a game at 11 in, in the evening, and I couldn't start a game at 7 a.m. But yet we let jets take off at 7 in the morning and land and take off at 11 p.m. And that, to me, is a, is a disgrace. So I would fight to close that on that end of it. And in terms of the uses, uh, let's, let's be real about it. Right now there's no money. I think was mentioned already. It's going to be very difficult to develop anything on that property with any kind of uh, housing dollars or any, any kind of development, serious development. But I don't see there's, there's no problem why we just can't expand and grow Clover Park. You know, we need more field space for these kids. Hi, Armin again. <laughs> okay, Armin again. Um, yes, I do support Resolution 6296. Um, and what I'm going to say is um, 
Uh, some of the, you guys clapped about the Playa Vista project, <laughs> not having a Playa Vista project. I'm sorry to say that I did actually work on the Playa Vista project as an engineer. Um, but as, as, the, as an engineer, there, there was a lot of positive uh, 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 components to that project. The problem was, is what happened afterwards. How did the project develop? My vision for uh, the airport land is actually based on another project that I worked on, which was in Japan. It was an energy efficient village. Um, I would like to see us, and part of the problem with the airport is going to be the federal land and the perpetuity clause. I would like to partner with the federal government, Santa Monica, and a portion of Los Angeles, and try to build some kind of a, of a very model energy efficient village for that area. Thank you. I'm Steve Duran. Um, I'll be brief. Would you support Santa Monica City Council Resolution 6296? Yes. Um, what vision would you propose for that airport land? Um, a point was very well said in that there is no re redevelopment money, as Councilwoman Davis mentioned, and that does limit what we can do right away. But we have to remember that once we close that airport, it's not like it's 227 acres of swampland. It already, it's a runway, it's, it's concrete. There are things we can do in the interim until we get that redevelopment money back to make some great park, which is what I would like to do, with an amphitheater where we can have classical music, we can have summer programs, we can bring Shakespeare in the park and play it there. I think that would be a great uh, res uh, place to have that. But in the meantime, we have a runway. We can use that space for farmers markets on the weekends or some other types of markets where, where it's a benefit to the residents, to all of Santa Monica, and it won't cost much because we already have the concrete there, we have grass there. You know, there are things we can do with it without great expense. My name, my name is Roberto Gomez and um, I'm new at this. I'm a neophyte, if, if, if you will that there's certain things that I'm experienced much in, and that's um, human decency. And I live at Mountain View Mobile Home Park, which the city owns and has owned for 10 years. And I'm here to tell you, the city of Santa Monica is the worst landlord you'll ever find. We've been, I mean, I live there. We've been abused by the city attorney's uh, department. We've been abused by the housing, um, by, uh, uh, the management company, specifically, RECNS, I have pleaded, I have sent reports to all the city councilmen with Mr. Ontario Day. I, what? I hate to interrupt you on this, but this particular forum is focused on Santa Monica Airport. I, I know there are plenty of other issues. Okay, fine. Okay. okay. Fine. Thank you. And, and um, if you can introduce yourself, you know, take a little more time and introduce yourself. Well, um, my name is Roberto Gomez. I live in Mountain View Mobile Home Park, and I've lived in Santa Monica for over 40 years. So I've seen the growth. I've seen um, the degradation of the city. I've seen, on the, on the development side, I've seen it uh, built uh, a lot, and I think it's too much. I um, recently found out that they sold the property on Ocean Avenue for $13.15 million. And it was like rushed through. You could see the, um, that Mr. Bobby Schreiber uh, made a notation saying that the city should have taken a lot more time and put it out in the public. And he did say that it seems like someone wanted to put it in really quickly. And I hope this doesn't happen with the airport. I don't want another New York City by the sea here in Santa Monica. And that's what it's looking like now. At the expense of the tenants and the expense of, of, the, of the people who own the properties. The reason I started with how the abuse of the city was to us. Thank you, thank you, Roberto. We, we, we got so many questions and so many candidates that we have to keep it within a time limit. And I'm talking about the city, right? I know, you, you no, I'm thank saying, you. That, that's There'll the be other line. questions. No, that, that's the bottom line. You don't want me to talk about the city. That, that's not so, Roberto. I'm sorry, yeah. but we're just trying yeah, to get through some questions. Fine.
Well, Roberto's issue um, does bring to mind one thing. I think if the city had the opportunity to get out of the mobile home business, it would, just like the airport business. Um, and um, and when this uh, 1981 uh, uh, question came up, I had the same reaction as Jerry. Wow, this was uh, quite a while ago. It was quite uh, precious. I was eight years old um, at the time. And the other aspect of this was the generally residential character. You know, Frank Gruber was a, a person who really educated me when I joined the Planning Commission about the jobs to housing imbalance. We don't have a generally residential character of the city anymore. It's a generally commercial, but we need to preserve what we've got of residential. Um, so uh, would I support this? The answer is no. Coming back to, I think, what you heard from Council Member Davis and, and also what you heard from um, Frank Gruber. Um, it is important that we do not put ourselves into one box as we approach this 2015 um, opportunity. We have to have all of our options open because if we aren't firing on all cylinders, we are not going to win uh, what we want for this community. We have to have our litigation strategy effective and organized. We have to, have our, uh, we have to be in talks with the FAA so we understand what they're thinking and we can't put them in a position of knowing exactly where we are going with this plan. If we do, then they will know exactly how to respond to us. The third aspect is this community planning effort that we're doing. That is important to understand what the community wants and to identify other strategies and mitigation because that has to be a viable um, uh, strategy in the eyes of the FAA. And the fourth part is the community organizing and being activated and getting more authority in the hands of the city to deal with the airport in 2015. Okay, is that, that it? Don't feel obligated to, we, we're running behind time already, so if you don't, uh, go ahead. Richard McKinnon. I support closing this airport. If this resolution does it, great. If we need some other strategy that's cleverer, and more strategically appropriate, great, let's do that. Whatever it is, the end game is to close the airport. What do we put in its place? I personally would like to see an arboretum or a park there, more recreation facilities, a reintroduction of the street structure through that area, which would provide a community that flows from one side to the other of Santa Monica, some element of the contiguous residential area that we currently all have here, and then a community visioning process to determine what other elements need to go there. When we close the airport, we're not just going to leave 221 acres of concrete in Santa Monica, but the move forward is in our hands, and that's the way it should be. Uh, you can take off 15 uh, seconds for allowing me to retort to Jerry's comment. Uh, I believe in debate. I believe in the free exchange of ideas, and I fully and strongly support the resolution. Um, and I don't think we should hold back and let in any way ourselves be intimidated by not only the airport, but city staff, anybody who's a hindrance or an obstacle in our way. I have a lot of ideas what to do with the airport, and um, one of the ideas is very radical, but I'm a radical kind of guy. and. Um, <clears throat> Uh, whatever we do with that airport, we have to consider feng shui. And that's very important to me. Uh, but we have to listen to the people who live in Santa Monica. And the way to do that is to have a public forum on the city website. Uh, one of my ideas, I was way ahead of my time here, is uh, to use the hangars to industrially grow marijuana. Because if you allow the cigarette companies, and this is going to happen, to industrially grow medical marijuana, they're going to make a lot of money. And I want the city to make that money. It's not enough just to tax it. So I'm taking off early because I already used up 15 minutes early. I know, I'm giving up 15 seconds. Oh, you did? Oh, I got 15 seconds more. Great. The idea, I know it's, it's really shocking to think of the idea that medical marijuana is something that uh, we could do at the airport. We have hangars there and it would provide jobs for people in Santa Monica. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Ted Winterer once again. Uh, I certainly, I, I uh, support the intent and the goal, Resolution 6296. 
Uh, what I'm concerned about is that we don't repeat the mistakes we made in the past, which is to talk a lot about closing the airport and then wind up with what is, in retrospect, an absolutely horrible negotiated agreement with the FAA, where we didn't foresee a lot of the unintended consequences. We thought, in that agreement, we'd eliminated pattern flying. Well, guess what? There was a loophole that allowed the flight schools to take advantage of pattern flying. We didn't foresee such an enormous increase in the jet traffic. And we don't know what else we not, might not foresee in the future. So to me, that means the solution is either closing the airport or at the very least taking out that 1949 quick claim parcel and 2,000 feet of runway. That's the goal we have to have, is that we either close the airport or limit the length of the runway so we can reduce impacts. In terms of a vision for the airport land, um, I think it's premature, very clearly, when we develop our land use and circulation element. We took the airport out of that. We envisioned, but there was with the idea that it would eventually close and we'd figure out what to do with that land. I don't know where we went detoured, as Frank pointed out, from this idea we're always going to close the airport in 2015 to thinking we're not. But we do need to have a specific plan developed by the community, but I don't think it's premature to worry about that. We can have that debate later. I like the model of the Tempelhof Airport in Berlin. They closed the airport. They didn't know what to do with it. They didn't have any money to do anything with it. They just closed the airport, painted some big white X's on it. People walked their dogs. People threw frisbees. They found a way to use it, even though they hadn't redeveloped the land at all. I'd also like to point out that if we do converge to park land or residential, I'm sorry, I'm Bob Selden. You know, that's been an airport for a long time. There's a lot of toxic residue on that property, and there's going to have to be remediation. And that costs a lot of money. Uh, whatever we do to it is going to cost money, and it's going to require a, a financial analysis to see what's doable. But I agree that the genesis for the ideas ought to come from the surrounding neighborhood, and then we should have planners and financial people and neighborhood representatives sitting around the table right from the beginning and thrashing out what's doable and what isn't. And uh, otherwise, I, I too support, as we all do apparently, closing the airport if possible and certainly uh, shortening the runways so if we can just get rid of the westerly portion of land. Barry or want to speak to this? Nope. We'll move on to the next question, which uh, is regarding Los Angeles representatives to the Santa Monica Airport Commission. <clears throat> Part of Santa Monica Airport property lies within Los Angeles. That, this question is quite dear to me, by the way. <laughs> Los Angeles borders approximately one half of the airport. Impacts from Santa Monica Airport on Los Angeles communities are unique and not given ample opportunity for in-depth discussion at the airport commission level. Under these conditions, do you feel that Santa Monica should have an equal responsibility and accountability to its neighboring Los Angeles communities? Would you support adding Los Angeles representation to the Santa Monica Airport Commission in an advisory non-voting non capacity? One minute. Ted Winter, and then Frank Ruber. Yes, Ted Winter again. Uh, I, res I uh, support responsibility and accountability to our neighboring communities. I'm not so sure it necessarily needs to be equal, given that the land was within our city borders. But it, certainly, we need to be cognizant of the impacts the airport has on Venice, Mar Vista, West LA. And I certainly would support adding a Los Angeles representative to the airport commission in an advisory non-voting capacity. Uh, I'm Bob Selden. Um, I th I th okay, go ahead, Bob. I, I'm Bob Selden. Um, I, I believe that Santa Monica should have a, uh, an equal responsibility and accountability to the neighboring Los Angeles, but it should be bilateral. To the extent there's uh, development issues going on in Los Angeles, there ought to be a bilateral obligation and responsibility to include Santa Monica representatives in as well. And uh, in that uh, 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 frame. Uh, I would also support LA representation on the airport commission as part of an overall cooperative uh, uh, agreement between the residents in those two areas. Uh, okay, Frank. 
Frank Gruber, uh, yeah, I, I think that the idea of the non-voting representative is good. I don't understand the equal, um, what is it called, the equal responsibility. I mean, the city council has to make these decisions. I think that the decisions that it makes for the benefit of Santa Monica residents in this thing also benefit the Los Angeles. I think that there's a community of interest, let's put it this way. I think that they're the same, so I don't think we have to divide it as to whether it's equal, but I love the idea of a person. And I, I want to take this moment to make a shout out to uh, uh, you know, City Council Member Rosendahl because he has been sometimes very critical about Santa Monica, but it's been great to have that person providing that uh, impact. If you don't mind, I'll stand a little bit. John C. Smith. Hi, um, I'm the news guy. I love hearing from all sides. And, uh, you know, I want to hear as many viewpoints as possible. Objectivity, objectivity was always my goal as a news producer. It's the goal here. I want to hear from all sources. However, it is my neighbors in LA, notwithstanding, the airport is in Santa Monica. And I really believe that Santa Monica should have the ultimate say in, in the future of the airport. Um, I'm a good neighbor. Excuse me. I actually lived in Los Angeles for a couple of years before moving back to Santa Monica. And I would welcome all kinds of input from LA and other communities, especially my friends in the back that I just met before tonight. Would I support a LA representation on the Santa Monica Airport Commission in a non-advisory, non-voting capacity? Absolutely. I want to hear from everybody. We've got to be a good neighbor. It's, it's a regional airport. It's used by a lot of people other than Santa Monica. But ultimately, I really think Santa Monica, the people of Santa Monica, and the people that live the closest to Santa Monica should have the most to say about its future. Thank you. Hey, uh, Jerry and Tony and then Sherry. Jerry, were you had your hand up? Yes, I would definitely support adding the LA representation to the Santa Monica Airport Commission in advisory non-voting capacity. And I would hope the Airport Commission would send that as a resolution to the City Council too. I think it would be beneficial. Um, regional, my gosh, you know, we do that for the homeless. There's been regional task force. If you're going to solve a problem, you have to do it in a regional way. And we would carry so much more ammunition, if you will. If Venice and Santa Monica and everyone would unite, the noise that's coming from one place to the other, until we close the airport, it's going to affect everybody. So there's power in numbers, and we need to all work together, and I think that's crucial. Um, and again, um, oh, that's it. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. No, I, I would definitely support uh, having a member from uh, whether it's West LA or Venice on the uh, airport commission, especially in a non-voting capacity. When I was in the city council, that actually discussion came up on the airport commission, and I'm surprised it never got resolved. Uh, and actually, at that time, uh, I was asking for us to have a representation on their development projects uh, in Venice and specifically Playa Vista because I had some real issues with the Playa Vista development when it came online because of the impacts it was going to have on Lincoln Boulevard in the Sunset Park community. And as a result of that, actually the council, because we weren't participants in that, what resulted is that we actually sued. Uh, we were part of the suit with the Sierra Club against the Playa Vista. And to avoid those confrontations in the future, I think we should have, it should be mutual. We should be able to sit on their uh, development projects, especially as it impacts Santa Monica and vice versa with the airport. Hi, Sherry Davis, and uh, I lived on the border of Santa Monica and Venice for six and a half years, and uh, we did have issues that uh, affected those of us on the Santa Monica side, as well as people on the Los Angeles side, which is why I was one of the co-founders of the Borderline Neighborhood Group, so that we could try to cooperatively deal with some of the issues we could do on the Santa Monica side, what was possible by approaching the city of Santa Monica. Um, and I must say the city was was fairly responsive from the very beginning on that. So that's the, my, my lead into saying, uh, yes, I do think that we should 
take into consideration and have uh, a great deal of sensitivity uh, to the residents in Los Angeles. And uh, you can't think of a person as being different just because they live across the street. That's kind of the approach that I would take on the City Council on, on pretty much any issues. And yes, I do think it's a good idea to add non-voting advisory members to the Airport Commission from the affected communities around the airport. Hi, uh, Arvin again. Um, I'm a little confused. I, I thought that the entire Santa Monica Airport actually um, was in the borders of Santa Monica City lines, but the question is actually uh, worded that part of it, uh, the property actually lies within Los Angeles. So, um, if, if if that that is correct, um, that's kind of what when I read this question, that's why I answered the other question to do the partnership. But um, what I think that I would I do not know exactly what the border lines are, but if it's a small percentage, I would actually advocate to. Uh, annex that portion, and I try to work with the city of Los, Los Angeles to annex that portion into Los Ange uh, into Santa Monica. Uh, we do need to work with them in terms of our uh, anything that's going to be proposed there. There's going to be a traffic circulation um, issues that are going to happen and tie in. So we do need to work. They do need also representation on the airport commission. Um, I agree with that. Thank you. Councilmember Terry O'Day, um, the impacts from the airport on the Los Angeles neighborhoods are, uh, as in terms of pollution, likely more severe than what we face in Santa Monica, and it's important that we take them very seriously. I don't think our airport commission today does not take that seriously. In fact, I think that the commission is doing everything it can to control pollution and noise and all the impacts of the airport. Um, I, I'm not sure I see the benefit then of adding this person. While I'm interested and always want to hear, uh, make sure that people have good representation, I know that our airport commission has that direction to take the input of everyone who comes and, and speaks um, to the commission and gets involved in these issues and takes it quite seriously. Um, you know, in it's important to consider that the airport is not just about uh, the, where it lies in terms of the land. It's also about the city of Santa Monica is funding the losses annually from that airport. It is funding the cost of the litigation, both in the 80s and the most recent litigation, and all of the consulting and strategies that are going on to affect that airport are happening with our dollars. These are times of tight dollars in both cities. City of LA is about 100 times larger than us. I'd like to see them assist us with some of that effort, and maybe this is a way to make that happen. I'll be very brief. Um, I think that with regard to all of its decisions, not just its decisions regarding the airport, that Santa Monica should take into account the effect that its decisions have on its neighbors. This community cares very much about the environment, for example, and air pollution, ultrafine particulates, those know no bounds. So, for example, the Santa Monica community adopted Measure V to clean up the beach, even though a lot of the stuff that needed to be cleaned up didn't come from Santa Monica. And just like we're stewards of the ocean, we need to be stewards of the air quality around the airport. So I very much think that we have thought about the neighborhoods. I think our airport commission constantly talks about it, and even if they didn't, I know Marty would remind them. We certainly hear about it from Council Member Rosendahl. So I think we do have an obligation in all areas, not just in the uh, uh, area of the airport. The question of having a non-voting member has come up before, and I, I agree with Terry to some extent. I think what's more important, quite honestly, is that the political bodies need to work together. The city council needs to be able to work with council member Rosendahl, Congressman Waxman, because that's where the political impetus to get the airport closed is going to come from. I would have no problem with having a regular item on the airport commission agenda where someone from the Los a designated representative could speak and uh, give input, but I'm not sure it needs to be a quote unquote member of the commission. Jonathan Mann, and I will be brief. Um, this is a no-brainer. I agree with both of those. I think that a lot of these divisions between us and our neighbors will go away as soon as we close the airport. Oh, Good morning. 
I'm oh, go ahead, go ahead. okay. Thank you. I'm Steve Duran. <clears throat> I think that Councilmember Davis brings up some very good points. Um, what I would add to um, what I would like to say is, I believe that Santa Monica has been a good neighbor, um, and it should it should uphold that. But in relation to um, adding a Los Angeles representative in a non-voting capacity, I would prefer um, working with the City of Los Angeles to. Um, get enough interest for them to create their own commission on their side of the fence, so to speak, with the idea that now you have two separate entities that are working for the same goal. I think it strengthens the argument um, on all fronts. On if, it, if it's closing, if, it, if we can't close it, then, it ha then reducing service. Um, just having a, the city of Los Angeles on our side, I think, makes a bigger uh, statement. And so I would prefer um, working with that city to have them create their their own commission. Um, that's it. Okay. Roberto. Well, first of all, my apologies because I, first of all, uh, I'm new at this and I, I didn't know this existed, so I didn't know that this is what we were just talking and making our discussion from. So. Having said that, um, I, I grew up in a border town named Calexico, California, and um, during the summertime or at night, uh, the farmers and the people from Mexicali would burn things at night, so I guess that was the appropriate time so people wouldn't really see. But what happened is that all the particulates that generated from one side to the other ended up traveling all over. So it didn't really matter since there was a fence or there was a demarcation line that uh, they would stay there. You know. Same thing with the airport. You know, uh, the, the parallelism is that when the jets come here, uh, the, the particulates spread all over. But it's for the benefit of the people here in Santa Monica or the, specifically for a few people that have their jets. And um, So I'm, I'm for uh, uh, having the um, people from the surrounding areas as an informal advisory uh, capacity because their lungs breathe as much particulates as we do. So I'm for that. And I'm also for um, uh, equal uh, responsibility and accountability to the Neighboring Los Angeles communities because of the, the health uh, concern. Thank you. <laughs> 